Now we'll now move to another topic. Let us start with the bargaining unit. When we say bargaining unit, this refers to a group of employees within a given employer unit who share mutual interest in wages, hours of work, working conditions, and other subjects of collective bargaining. Now, a bargaining unit may be composed of all or less than all of the entire body of employees in the employer unit. For example, a bargaining unit of uh, rank and file, a bargaining unit of supervisors, a bargaining unit of hourly paid workers, or a bargaining unit of daily paid workers. A uh, bargaining unit may also be composed of any occupational grouping within an employer unit. So, for example, in an airline company, pilots, flight attendants, and ground personnel will constitute separate bargaining units because they do not share mutual interest in wages, hours of work, and other working conditions. In a school, teaching personnel constitutes a bargaining a unit separate from non-teaching personnel. A bargaining unit may also be composed of a geographical grouping within an employer unit. For example, a soft drinks manufacturing company with plants in Manila, Cebu, and Davao, the employees of the Manila plant may establish a bargaining unit separate from the Cebu plant or Davao plant. A bargaining unit is different from a union. A bargaining unit is a group of employees, whether union members or not, who share mutual interest in wages and other subjects of collective bargaining. On the other hand, a union is a group of employees organized for collective bargaining. That is why it is possible that two or more unions may exist in a bargaining unit. Now, as to which union will represent the bargaining unit will be settled through certification election. And the union that wins in the election will be certified as the bargaining agent of the bargaining unit. The bargaining unit must be appropriate. And to be considered as appropriate, the bargaining unit must be composed of employees who have substantial mutual interest in wages, hours of work, and other subjects of collective bargaining. That is why a bargaining unit composed of employees with entirely different working conditions is not an appropriate bargaining unit. A bargaining unit composed of a mixture of rank and file and supervisory employees is not an appropriate bargaining unit because there is no mutuality of interest between rank and file and supervisory employees. There are certain factors that are to be considered in fixing the appropriate uh, bargaining unit. First is the will of the employees or the GLOBE doctrine. Second is the community of interest. Third is the similarity of employment status. And lastly, prior bargaining history, the GLOBE doctrine. Under the GLOBE doctrine, the main consideration in fixing the appropriate bargaining unit is the express will or desire of the employees. The doctrine sanctions the holding of elections, not for the purpose of determining the bargaining agent, but for the specific purpose of permitting the employees in each of the several categories to select the collective bargaining unit. Under the community of interest rule, the main consideration in fixing the appropriate bargaining unit is the affinity and unity of employees' interest, such as substantial similarity of duties or similarity of compensation and working conditions. Under the similarity of employment status, the main consideration in fixing the appropriate bargaining unit is the status of employment. The rule requires that non-regular employees be grouped as one category and the regular employees be grouped as another category. Then we have prior bargaining history. This is not a decisive factor because prior bargaining history may be disregarded when the circumstances had been so altered that the past mutual experience can no longer be considered as a reliable guide to the present determination of the bargaining unit. So under this situation, only the prevailing factor should control the determination of the bargaining unit. The labor code discourages the proliferation of unions in an establishment. The general policy is one company, one union, unless the circumstances require otherwise. The reason for this is to strengthen the bargaining power of the employees by their unity and solidarity, rather than diminish it with disunity, division, or dissension. But the one union, one company policy is subject to some exceptions. 
first of which is when supervisory employees organize themselves into a bargaining unit separate and distinct unit of rank and file employees. The one union, one company policy cannot be applied because the law, Article 249, expressly prohibits supervisory employees from joining the organization of rank and file. Second exception is when the employer unit has to give way to other bargaining units like the craft unit or plant unit. For example, in an airline company, separate bargaining units may be formed for ground personnel, another for cabin attendants, and another for pilots. In an educational institution, separate bargaining units may be formed for teaching personnel and another for non-teaching personnel. In a hospital, separate bargaining units may be formed for doctors and another for nurses. Now, the reason for this is because the employees belonging to a particular class do not share mutual interest in wages and other subjects of collective bargaining. Third exception is when a certain class of employees are excluded from the coverage of the existing bargaining unit. Now, this is exemplified by the case of Neat Joy. Now, in this case, Union 1 is the certified bargaining agent representing only the daily paid rank and file employees. Later, the monthly paid rank and file employees organized Union No. 2 and filed a petition for certification election. Union 1 challenged the petition on the ground that the proposed bargaining unit is not an appropriate bargaining unit because it violates the one company, one union policy. Now, so the issue here is whether the monthly paid rank and file employees can be considered as an appropriate bargaining unit, separate and distinct from the existing unit of daily paid rank and file employees. And what was the ruling of the Supreme Court? The Supreme Court ruled that the monthly paid rank and file employees can constitute an appropriate bargaining unit because the bargaining history of the company has consistently been limited to the regular rank and file daily paid employees. The monthly paid employees were never included in the scope of the bargaining unit. Two or more corporations cannot be treated as a single bargaining unit even if their businesses are related. The reason is because the companies are distinct and separate entities with separate juridical personalities. This is exemplified by the case of San Miguel. San Miguel had four operating divisions. The Beer Division, Packaging Division, Feeds and Livestock Division, and Magnolia and Agribusiness Division. The San Miguel Employees Union is the bargaining agent of the rank and file employees in this division. Later, San Miguel is one of two of its operating divisions, namely the Magnolia and Agribusiness Division and the Feeds and Livestock Division. Now, these uh, two divisions became two separate and distinct corporations. One became the Magnolia Corporation and the other the San Miguel Foods Incorporated. During the renegotiation of the CBA, the union insisted that the bargaining unit should still include the employees of the span of corporation. San Miguel claimed that the employees who had moved to Magnolia Corporation and San Miguel Foods Incorporated can no longer be included in the bargaining unit because they are no longer employees of San Miguel. The issue here is, should the bargaining unit at San Miguel still include the employees of Magnolia Corporation and San Miguel Foods? The Supreme Court ruled that the bargaining unit at San Miguel should no longer include the employees of Magnolia Corporation and San Miguel Foods uh, Incorporated because when Magnolia Division and the Feeds and Livestock Division were spun off, they became distinct entities with separate juridical personalities.